Hello there, and welcome to another of Andre's Artist Profiles. Now, I'm profiling an artist today that I only really got into about five years ago. And what happened was, I was talking to my friend, uh, Henrik Hopkins, who just started a blog with me. Uh, hey, Henrik, how's it going? Hope you enjoy this video. Little shout out to Henrik there. And uh, he was telling me about some great uh, music that R. Kelly had done on an album called Happy People, which I'll get into a little bit later. And I started listening to some of it online streaming, and I fell in love with it. I had always thought of R. Kelly as sort of a one-off, but the more I've learned about him, the more I've realized that he really embodies the um, ambiguity of the soul singer-artist He's a multi-talented person, songwriter, producer, instrumentalist, whatever, um, that happened in the 1990s. Uh, there's a part of him that wants to be really vulgar and perverse. There were some issues with him and underage girls and so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter was is that uh, R. Kelly was really a great talent. Now, there are some albums by him that I don't have because he simply slips into the most mediocre variety of hip-hop. But anyway, I'll get into that a little bit later. This is his first album with the band Public Announcement called Born Into the 90s. Actually, it's a really good album. It's very much in the New Jack Swing uh, style from 1992 on the Jive record label. There's R. Kelly right there. But the fact of the matter is, the material is of very high quality and uh, there's a strong funkiness to it. Almost like a go-go sound. And I, I really appreciate that about R. Kelly's first album. Now, his first proper solo album, and probably his most famous, is this one, uh, 12 Play, which was released a year later, in 1993. And, of course, he had a big hit off this called uh, Bump and Grind. And the song, actually, I like most from this is Sex Me Part 1 and 2. Um... He was able to really most effectively balance his New Jack slash hip hop production with, you know, lyrics that were sexual, but at the same time expressed a certain personal yearning on his part that was a bit more eloquent. Bobby Broom, the um, uh, George Benson slash Earl Klug type pop jazz guitarist from the 80s plays on this album. Very musicianly for a New Jack Swing album, a very innovative record. You should really check it out. It can be gotten easy at a lot of used shops if you can look for it. This album from 1995, I like it all right. And it made a big splash for R. Kelly because of the song I Believe I Can Fly, which was from the movie Space Jam. And, you know, Yolanda Adams, the gospel singer, has covered it. It's become such a modern classic, and it's a great song. Um, I'm not too fond of You Remind Me of Something on this album and a lot of the rest of it, because it reminds me of the things I don't like about R. Kelly. It's a little more of an inconsistent album. Anyway, in 1998, he did something that no other R&B artists were really doing at the time. Forgive the price tag, here's a digipack. Releasing the double album, R. Most of this album is really contemporary funk with a little bit of a hip-hop twist. Um, very much of an album kind of project. And a lot of the songs kind of go into each other. And this is where R. Kelly, the artist, began to emerge, and the funkier side of him, I think. There's some pictures of him inside there. He became a huge success at this point. Now, uh, 12 Play actually turned out to be part of a series of albums, including this one called tp2.com slash 12 Play Part 2. This album came out in the year... Um, 2000. In 1999 and 2000, there were a lot of songs with email and .com in them when the internet really started to take off, and I think R. Kelly bought into some of that. This album has, you know, the beginnings of that kind of contemporary R&B sound that a lot of people do, okay, that hip-hop-inspired sound. But R. Kelly does it very well, and there's some strong, funky material on this album, actually, for what it is. Now, on The Chocolate Factory... This is where R. Kelly really begins to take off in that slick, funk, soul, high, slash Philly-inspired sound with Step in the Name of Love. Um, the albums are all linked by these Chocolate Factory kind of medleys. There's still some of that contemporary R&B sound on this album, but this is where R. Kelly, the artist, emerged. After this album, he got into legal trouble. 
um, with underage women, and released this album a year later, Happy People and You Save Me. Happy People is a full-on uh, 70s soul funk explosion. Highly recommend it. Love it. Great follow-up to The Chocolate Factory. What got me into uh, R. Kelly in the first place since Henrique introduced me to this? And You Save Me is a gospel album that he put out. Um, the show, and this showcased on two albums respectively the twin sides of his identity. The Carnal Soul and the Gospel. Um, sometimes I wish the black community would find a moral compass that wasn't Christian oriented because a lot of people who say they're born again Christians today have done some really terrible things in the name of God and I don't want to get into that. This album is alright. It's a collaboration. I think you can see the hologram cover. There's um, R. Kelly, Jay-Z, R. Kelly, them together. It's called R. Kelly and Jay-Z Unfinished Business. They, I think they recorded another album together. Not a bad hip-hop collaboration. I like some things on it. I don't like other things. A lot of the language is very detestable, but that's another story. Here is um, 12 Play 3, TP3 Reloaded, which uh, came out, actually, in 2005. This album includes a DVD to this huge epic song about how one lie leads into another called Trapped in the Closet. A great modern soul epic that I think a lot of people missed because of all the controversy R. Kelly was having during this time. Great album, actually. A little stronger, actually, than TP2. At least I find it to be so. Untitled, um, I Bought This Sight Unseen. This has got to be R. Kelly's weakest album that I have ever heard. It is extremely vulgar sexually. The music is the most boring variety of contemporary R&B. And the only reason I keep it is because I hope one day I'll come to like it. I really don't like anything on this album, to be honest with you. It is definitely not his strongest. But he gained new ground with Love Letter, another great album inspired by 70s Motown. Um, very much in the style of Chocolate Factory and You Send Me, R. Kelly was going in a great direction on this 2010 album and repeated it with the even more 70s funk of Write Me Back in 2012, which came out last year. He released an album this year, actually, but I'm going to tell you something. It's called Black Panties... And it's just about as ridiculous, vulgar, and representing the worst and the most cliched element of quality of contemporary R&B as the untitled album from 2009. So I gave that one the slip. If you like R. Kelly's artistry, don't go out and get black panties. It's not a very good album. I'm just going to say that. I'm sorry. It's not a good album. I'm hoping that he puts out another Love Letters, Write Me Back, or Happy People. That's a side of R. Kelly that I personally appreciate. And I want to know, R. Kelly's not, and I repeat, not going to make the music I personally want him to make, or anybody else. But I'm hoping he finds that part of him that wants to do that kind of thing, because that's where his soul is, at least to me. So anyway, happy birthday to R. Kelly. And, uh, frankly, better luck next time on your music, R. Kelly. I think you have it in you. I'll see you next time.